Every June, Villefranche explodes with colour when the Bergenvillier flowers. It's everywhere from the walls of the ancient port to the grandest Belle Epoque villas. It lines the streets and it frames the views. It's so spectacular that French TV even ran a piece on it last week, telling their viewers that the plant was named after the man who discovered it, Captain Bougainville. But that's not actually true, because Bougainvillea was in fact discovered by a woman. A woman who dressed as a man. This is the true story of Jeanne Barré the cross-dresser who brought Bergenvillier to the Riviera. Jeanne Barré was born into a poor family in 1740 in rural France. As she grew up, she became skilled at gathering and learning about different plants, and she soon became known locally as the Herb Woman. In 1760, a botanist called Philibert Commerson moved close to Jeanne's hometown of Autan, and he began to collect plant samples. The two became good friends, and when Commerson's wife died, they began to live together, with Barre acting as his housekeeper and assistant. But then an explorer called Louis Antoine de Bougainville asked Commerson to be the botanist on his ship L'Etoile as he journeyed to the South Seas to discover new territories for France. Commerson wanted his lover and assistant Jeanne to come along, but the French Navy didn't allow women on board ships, so the two cooked up a plan. Jeanne would disguise herself as a man and offer her services at the dockside just before the ship set sail. The plan worked a treat and Commerson employed his lover and they managed to keep her true identity secret from the crew of 100 men as they sailed for the South Seas. The journey was long and tedious, and Commerson became very ill, first with seasickness and then with a badly ulcerated leg, and Barre was forced to spend most of her time looking after him. Eventually, L'Etoile landed in Montevideo, and Barre and Commerson could begin collecting their specimens. But Commerson again became ill, and Barre was forced to do most of the exploring. And it is during one of these explorations that she discovered a beautiful plant which she brought back to the ship and which they named Bergenvillea after the captain, Monsieur Bougainville. Loaded with specimens, the ship now set sail for Tahiti and it is here that disaster struck for Barre. According to Captain Bougainville's diary, a group of Tahitian men surrounded her, identified her as a woman and threatened to rape her, at which point she was forced to tell the other sailors of her true identity. However, Bougainville's account may actually disguise a much darker story because three other members of the crew subsequently contradicted the captain's account. They said that Barre was exposed as a woman by her fellow crewmen, and that it was they who gang-raped her. However, there is also a third theory, and this was the one put forward by the ship's surgeon. He asserted that Barre was in fact a transvestite, and that this was what was revealed to the crew. Whichever of these accounts one chooses to believe, what was now clear to Captain Bougainville 
was that he had a woman on board his ship and that under French law this was illegal. When the ship landed in Mauritius, Commerson and Barret were forced to disembark. And the two began a new life on the island. Barret and Commerson set up home together and they began collecting plant specimens just as they had done in France. But when Commerson died unexpectedly at the age of 45 in 1773, Barret's world was shattered. And she was left stranded on the island because despite the fact that Commerson had rewritten his will to make her the major beneficiary, she could not claim the money as she could not get back to France. And it seemed she would have to spend the rest of her days in poverty, running an inn on the port of St. Louis. Then one day she meets a non-commissioned officer in the French army and the two marry and they are able to return home to France, a journey which makes her the first woman to circumnavigate the globe. The two of them settle in the village of Saint-Olay and perhaps that would have been the last we'd have heard about Jeanne Barré another woman whose achievements were just a footnote to those of her male counterparts. But then in 1785, something extraordinary happens. And Barré is granted a pension of 200 livres a year by the French Minister of Marine. The document granting her this pension says, Jeanne Barré, by means of a disguise, circumnavigated the globe on one of the vessels commanded by Monsieur de Bougainville. She devoted herself in particular to assisting Monsieur de Commerson, doctor and botanist, and shared with great courage the labours and dangers of this savant. His lordship has been gracious enough to grant to this extraordinary woman a pension of 200 livres a year to be drawn from the Fund for Invalid Servicemen, and this pension shall be payable from the 1st of January, 1785. Jeanne Barret died in saint olay on August the 5th, 1807, where her grave remains to this day. Captain Bougainville may have been given the credit for bringing Bougainvillea to Europe, but in fact, it was this cross-dressing, self-educated, working-class woman who was really responsible for the importation of the wonderful plant which lights up the French Riviera every June. <laughs> <laughs>